Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm here to show you a, a how I do it or what works for me type video for the curved spine. Um, I've been having a play around with it and I, I've come up with something that works for me and people have been asking, how have you done it? So this is how I do it. First of all, I need to talk to you about the materials I use. So. I call this thick cardboard. I know a lot of people call it chipboard. This is um, what I use for my book covers. It is, I don't know if you can see that, ah, oh, there we go. Two mil thick grey board, it's called, obviously, it's grey. Book board, very stiff, does the job for what I want it to for my book cover, my journal covers. And this is uh, one mil thick. Now I've got loads of this left over from when I was making mini albums. So this is what I use for my spine. You're supposed to use all book binding courses, people, books, whatever, tell you to use a thin material for your spine if you can. So I use this one. It's, as you can see, a lot more flexible, gives a bit more as opposed to this, which is fairly solid. So if I get that out of the way, and that one. I've got a two inch spine that I use. Now, I know people use rolling pins and I, I have tried to use a rolling pin and it came out looking more like a tunnel than a curve. So I use a tin, a big tin. It is, I think I measured it up at, where are we if I can find the right end of the flipping ruler? Oh, there we go. Uh, about two and a half inches. I can, I'm rubbish at this video lark. About two and a half inches in diameter. So what's that, about 64, 65 mil. And that's what works for me. Along with, once you've got it wet, you then need to tie it up. I use an old pair of tights I cut up. So you need to soak both sides. It does the board get obviously quite delicate and will mark a bit more. I know I've seen videos with people using glycerin. Um I haven't got any and I wasn't gonna be in a bit of a skimplint, wasn't gonna buy any until I saw if I could use go without and I can. Here in the UK, trying to find liquid fabric stiffener or starch is a bit of a nightmare. I, have, I, I did actually get some off Amazon. So I found some of this in Tesco's. That did the job. It's a spray one. That does the job. And equally, I used, I got some of this off Amazon just to see. And I, I actually can't really tell a difference. So, right, let's just give that a bit of an extra spray now I've been talking. Now convention says that you put it into a container which I don't appear to have. So I'm just going to brush it on. I I can honestly say I've never used starch in my laundry. I don't iron very often if I can help it, but I've never used starch. I do remember my mother using it and definitely my grandma. But um mm. and then you need to do the other side as well. Or I need to do I do the other side. <coughs> I will learn one day. Not to assume that people want to copy me word for word. Sorry. Right, so now I've made a nice mess. I've got both sides reasonably well covered in water and starch. It is more hassle than um, 
doing a, a straight spine, but I do think the effects are worth it. Right. Now for the fun bit, you need to... My in camera. Yeah, if I just zoom in a bit. You need to mould it around whatever you're using as your... As your shape. Now I like this tin because I can line this up at the bottom. If I can show you, I can line it up to that. So I get it, I get a reasonably square um, spine. So it doesn't go off like that, which means that it's all crooked then when you come to use it, which happened on my first couple of attempts. So I get the first one tied on and then I can go back and check. Just move it around if I need to. That'll do. I know people use different things for, for tying these up but as needs must and this is what I had so. You can always go back on and move them after. You just need to try and make sure that it's covered. Otherwise, I found what happens to mine is I end up with like, can you see where that is bubbling? Not bubbling, but sort of warping almost because it hasn't got anything to hold it down. So, oops. And that is still level. So then you just go on and you wrap it round. I leave mine overnight in a fairly warm room up here. Now I'm allowed back in the house. And you can always just go and cover up bits. After and then the last one. Now my hands aren't that good, so if I can do this, I am the sort of person that gets fed up with a pen sometimes. There we go. How sexy does that look? Looks like a mummy. Anyway, that's it. That is all there is to making a curved spine. I, for me, this is how it works for me. So for the UK viewers, oh, blind. Ah, here we go. you remember Blue Peter? Here's one I made earlier. Now you can see where I haven't quite got it an even tension on it but that will for me I find I can straighten that out just by running my fingers along it let's just get this a quick wipe now that sits quite nicely so that will be front, back, my spine for this next journal that I'm doing. Can you see that? Now, I know people use Tyvek and I have to admit I haven't tried it. I've seen it demonstrated. We don't, or oh, I can't don't get Tyvek envelopes, so I have to buy the, the sheets if I want to use it. Uh, I haven't used it, but I'm assuming if you can... No, it have to go that way because it's not long enough. You would cut it 
and glue that into the middle for your to then put these onto I think should we give it a go I've never actually used a Tyvek sheet before on this I normally use the tape that I use on my normal book binding and I would stick half down there and half on that one Let's try it and so measure length. I've got a pencil, so that's my length. Right, back in a bow, I'll go and cut this and we'll see what we got. Right, back. I've cut this to be, my spine is two inches, so I've cut it, I've allowed two inches plus a quarter inch either side for the ease of movement, you know, um, the allowance for opening and closing the book and then the balance to go actually on the board itself. I do know you need to use bamboo tack for this because it is, because the starch is water-based, it will start dissolving it will start losing its shape. That's what I mean, sorry. I'm not very good at talking and demonstrating. Now I have to admit, I am not a huge fan of fabric tank. I find it so messy, but it really does do the job. It has got to stick right to the very edge. Now I know people say, oh, you should get a, one of your, your little spatula thingies out to uh, spread glue. Ah, more washing up. So, <laughs> it would help if I'd have Made a mark to mark the centre, I suppose. That looks about level. Actually, that might be a bit easier than what I'd normally do. Certainly quicker. As I said, me and Fabri-Tac have a bit of a love-hate relationship going on. Although I can see it lets you have a bit more movement than perhaps my normal movement. Right, the only disadvantage to using fabric tack as well, if I can see, is you're going to need to let it dry. Like that looks well and truly stuck to me. Now I have... I've made myself a, a spacer bow. I've seen ladies on YouTube who have really nice sort of metal spacer bars, which I'm assuming are for quilting. But I've got three thicknesses of my normal book board. So about six mil. What does that measure out to? A quarter inch. So, if I just zoom in a touch so you can see what I'm doing, and all of a sudden the sun's gone in. I'm putting my light over. So, I come to glue 
my board on the front <coughs> onto that one. I've got my spacer bar in place and just lay that down, removing the spacer bar. So let's give this a go. Roughly where I think we should be. Am I in fact? Yes, it's my head in the way, probably. So pushing up against the space bar. Pulling that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn it over back and just putting that into place. I think what might have been an idea here, and it's a bit late on that side now. No, maybe not. Okay, let's try the back one. Back. Yeah, I still have to write front and back on each piece. So, my spacer bar, or whatever you're using to space, I do admire people that can do that, just by eye, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm not very good at that. That, I think, has moved a touch. I think I might have used a bit too much glue. Push that up. Turn it over. Get rid of all my excess glue. As I said, still coming to grips with fabric tech. And that is got a bit of excess glue down there, but that shouldn't make much of a difference, I don't think. I'll wait for that to dry. Alright, so there you have the bare bones of a rounded spine journal. Right, the next step is to cover it in cloth and then put in a case binding. That's the one. Bear with me a minute. So, case binding with. Where are we? There we go. So you can get your finger down the back so it floats, so it folds fairly flat. I will go and grab a, my signatures, which I've already sewn onto the my book cloth, and then I will come back. Right, next step after we've got our spine attached to the covers, or the boards is to put a cover over the top. Technique is very it's very much the same for um, the other tutorial I did on hard covers, except in that I start with the spine because the spine has to have fabric tack on it 
or a non-water based glue simply because as I said before the, the water will just dissolve the um, the starch and you'll end up with a, a nice spine but it will be flat right now I know I've probably got too much glue but hey ho that's what I was on about when I said about using your trowel I didn't mean a trowel I meant a spatula I think that's what it's called so the glue has to be especially on the sides because I found that that for me just gives me a, a better shape on the side all this stuff is awful and then it's roughly just trying to work out where your center is on your on your covers I'm giving, I, I know I always err on the side of caution that'll do and I always cut my covers bigger than I know I'm going to need them I will put links below for um, the other videos I've done about uh, hard covers about book cloths or painted covers same as these I've, I've made them both ways now in these books so one with uh, what two or three with paper and then the last one I did was a fabric one um, or fabric covered and I have to say I found the fabric so much easier to work with it just moulds to shape so once you've got that on I like to define the edges I'm just running my nails down you can run them um, a stylus down or whatever it is that you've got let me just give this a quick wipe before it sets solid and I can't use it again bear with me right that's done I've got the top on this stuff and then because I've got an embossed design on that one I'll do the back first Now, as I said, this is just very much a, a, how I do it, what works for me. I'm quite happy to share that with you. There are lots of other people out there that have different ways of doing things. This is the glue I use. Well, I use it for everything, actually. Deco page. So I use it to seal my paper covers. I use it to glue my um, fabric down. I've forgotten to before I get glue everywhere because I am a very messy person. If you're very confident about doing this then feel free to skip to the end of the video. Move that out of the way. I like the look you get with you've got a very defined shape between the spine and the front board. So I tend to start there. And then work my way along. beauty of fabric it is a lot more forgiving than paper so that's the back done a bit of paper for the front
and it's very much the same um, and then sort of just working around um, the embossing which I'm sure that I'll put a link below to uh, the video I did about making these raised embossed covers so that you can see if it all looks a bit fun. Just making sure that the edges are all nice and stuck. Move that out of the way. And again, well, for me anyway. Everybody has their own particular ways of doing things. And this is very much a, like I say, a what works for me. I've had so many nice, so many nice comments, you know. Will you show me how to do this? And it's like, okay. Like I say, I've learned so much from the ladies, and I still learn so much from the ladies on YouTube. It's nice to be able to give something back sometimes. Right, I will go ahead and finish off. So I'm going to let that bit dry on the embossed bit before I can do anything else. And I will come back to show you how I finish off the insides. Right, I've let the cover dry. I've gone around the embossing on the front. What I have done is I've trimmed off the sides of the material, taken it down to about an inch, just under an inch, something like that. And then it's just a question of finishing off the inside the same as for any hardcover or any journal that you fold in the fabric over. I'm, I've am i watched lots of people that just can snip off the corners. I'm not that confident. I tend to make fold it over like that and then at least I've I don't know if you can actually if that's going to pick it up oh there it is it makes a crease that I can sort of follow I don't follow it exactly I do leave myself some so I am just folding it over and I am cutting sort of there so if I do that with all of them and then it's just a question of gluing it all down Oops, too far in all you need to do is just check that you've got enough to go over the corner <clears throat> excuse me and it is very much I feel like I'm repeating myself, so if I am, um, I apologise. This is really all that's been covered in my other um, tutorial. I always start with a long edge. It just makes it easier for me. And then it's just gluing them down, making sure you've got enough glue to get the corners in so if I show you this one long edge so I'm using the same glue as I did before just the deco page I am desperately trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Move that 
out of the way. And then just fold it over and because it's fabric, just wipe off any bits that go over. It will mould quite nicely. Just need to make sure you've got them nice and tight against the top. So I am going to have to turn it over because I can't. If you do get any creases like I've just had there, they will generally with fabric anyway. Come out. You can generally mould them out. So what you should be left with, I'm just easing it into what will be the, the seam. And then you just need to just fold that bit over. That will give you your neat edge. So that bit, I just use my thumb now and fold it down. Let's go for that one, that looks drier. Which glue on that? Get rid of the mat. If it helps, I've seen ladies do that, but I can't do it with a curved spine, so I apologise. Nice tight seam on the top. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that these bits are all nicely pressed down otherwise when you come to put your cover papers on there, it's going to be um, lumpy and bumpy. If you do find some bits have come unstuck, it's easy enough just to run some glue under. And then just fold that piece over. And that one. I think a nice dry bit of paper. And then the end pieces. Which glue? Like I say, I'll put links below for how I actually paint the covers and you do all the embossing bit below. Right. And then same again. Hopefully that bit will have stuck.
And then because you've got a bit of glue on there, if it's not quite or you've got a bit of fray, because it's wet fabric, it will mould beautifully. This is where I come and stuff with the paper sometimes. That's what I want. And then this piece. So I start off on the um, cardboard simply because I always put too much flipping glue on these things. And same again. Got some glue on that. Now that piece has got a bit of a fry on, so it just mould it in. As I said, I get a bit heavy handed with adhesives. I just like to make sure nothing comes unstuck. So then, once it's dry, and you've got your signatures in place, you can go in and define that edge properly. Because that will then push down. So I've forgotten to pick up my bone folder to do it. And there you have your hard cover. with a rounded spine. The next step is actually putting in the signatures so it becomes a case binding, which will be in the next video because I think I've probably bored you enough for this one. So, there we go people. I hope you found that useful. I am going to have to go and sort this corner out because it's annoying me immensely. Right, that's better. I will speak to you all in the next video. Bye.